Jews are still being blamed for the tragedy of September 11th. We are still the victims of conspiracy. We are being accused of controlling the banking system, of dominating world politics, of poisoning the media. Today, over a quarter of Germans hold anti-Semitic views. In the Netherlands, anti-Semitism makes up 41% of all xenophobic incidents. Less than two weeks ago, a teacher in Argentina was caught saying to her students, and I quote, Jews took advantage of the people who needed money. And she was teaching her students about the Holocaust. Four million anti-Semitic tweets were recorded last year alone. The Prime Minister of Malaysia claimed he is, and I quote, glad to be labeled anti-Semitic. And just this past Sunday, here in the United States, Louis Farrakhan, the leader of the Chicago-based Nation of Islam, called Judaism, and I quote, a gutter religion. He referred to observant Jews as satanic for following the Talmud, and he claimed that the Jews had, quote, infected the world. As history teaches, mankind is predisposed to designate a scapegoat for the world's problems. For thousands of years, the Jewish people have been chosen as that scapegoat. Name any ill in the world, the Jews are probably being blamed for it. And we see it also here at the UN. Anti-Semitism is as old as the Jewish people, and it did not stop in 1948. We must not pretend that anti-Israel sentiment is different than anti-Semitism. It is simply a new term for the same old hatred. Israel's enemies wanted to destroy the Jewish state since the day it was born. The day we declared independence, we were attacked on all sides. We won, but we continued facing hostility nearly every decade following. Seventy years of attacks have come in all forms, whether through guns, suicide bombs, ballistic missiles, or political statements. I just came back from the Security Council. They are debating a resolution against Israel, and tomorrow they will bring it to a vote. Anti-Semitism is alive and well with Israel as its target. One of the most aggressive anti-Semitic movements is taking place all around the world, even here in New York. The boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, we call it BDS, is an effort to boycott Israeli companies, sports, cultural, and academic institutions. It encourages the withdrawal of investments into Israel and pressures governments to expel Israel from international forums, including the UN. But the scariest part of BDS, and I'm very happy to see young people among us today, and we will hear from the young representatives also later on today, the scariest part of BDS is how normal and accepted it has become on American college campuses. Here in New York, Chicago, Washington, Los Angeles, everywhere, college students supportive of BDS, hide behind the mask of civil rights language and peace activism. They claim that they are not against Jews, but are only against the state of Israel. My message to you tonight, and to anyone who agrees with them, is this. If you are against the Jewish homeland, if you are against the right of the Jewish people to have a state, then you are against the Jews. Israel is a democracy a vibrant, strong, liberal democracy. We welcome debate. We accept criticism. But we will not tolerate hate. We will not allow others to isolate and delegitimize us under the guise of constructive criticism. We will no longer be fooled by that trend, not in our schools, not in our communities, and not even here in the United Nations. There is no coincidence that only one state is singled out over and over again simply for defending itself, or that only one state faces threats from United Nations member states to boycott and divest from it. Not against Iran, not against North Korea. There is no BDS about them, only about Israel. 
and there is only one state that is denied the right to determine its own capital, the eternal capital that was ours to begin with. We must adapt a zero tolerance policy for anti-Semitism in all of its forms, attacks against Jews, BDS, efforts to delegitimize us, these are not points of view. They are bigotry. My friends, we cannot stop fighting such a clear manifestation of hatred. That is what the UN was founded to do. It is a mission that we, as defenders of the only liberal democracy in the Middle East, must complete in our schools, our communities, and our countries. As Israel's ambassador to the UN, I live and breathe that fight every day. I consider it my most important responsibility to show the truth about Israel, and I ask you today to do the same. As my late father taught me, to stand strongly, to never apologize for what you know is moral, and to remember that we have chosen the right side of history. Thank you very much.